Hey everyone, like I mentioned last week, I wasn't really sure what the video topic for this week's video would be because I'm spending most of this week focusing on preparing for the Model X video that I will start filming on Friday. So I was a bit stuck until I remembered that someone asked me to do a quick video talking about the EVSC that I built using parts from the Open EVSC project and some telephone company test equipment from the 1960s. It's this thing right over here. So let me give you a quick tour of this ridiculous looking contraption. The piece of equipment that I used for this build, if I remember correctly, was manufactured in 1968 or 1969, right around there. Um, and I haven't done a ton of research into it, but I'm pretty sure it would probably have been used for testing telephone company switching equipment at the time. Regardless, it is really cool looking. I know it has a lot of buttons and switches and knobs and dials on it. At the moment, the only functional elements uh, are the switch right here, which turns on and off some LEDs that I put in here replacing the incandescence. I also added some surface mount LEDs in here to illuminate the gauge, which it's pretty bright in here right now, so you can't really see much of that. Um, the other piece that functions is the press to measure speed button. Um, what this actually does is cycles through the menus uh, for the open EVSC controller. So I can press it real quick. It puts the EVSC into sleep mode. Press it again, it wakes up, and I can press and hold and cycle through the various menus and change the EVSC settings. The other functional element is this analog gauge right here. Uh, it has a nice scale on the bottom half going from 0 to 25, which I noticed and thought, wow, that's absolutely perfect because this EVSC is only hooked up to a 30 amp 240 volt circuit, so it can deliver a maximum of 24 amps. Gauge is perfect. So I have this analog gauge hooked up to a simple bridge rectifier circuit that has a current divider in it uh, and it's attached to a CT coil that uh, runs out to the car. So basically the current being passed to the car is displayed on this gauge right here. Needle just comes up, comes down, you know, shows whatever, whatever amount of current is being passed to the car in real time. I still have a lot of room inside to make changes and improvements and stuff, so at some point I really, really want to make the rotary dial do something because I mean, come on, rotary dials are awesome. I don't know what I'd use it for, but I eventually will come up with some purpose for that. Let's take a quick peek inside. Remember the first rule of working with electricity. If you're gonna open something like this up, make sure you shut the power off or unplug it. You can see right now it is completely unpowered. Let's open it up. With the face removed, you can see, well, everything inside. I mean, you've got the, the CAT6 cable here um, that I use to connect the I2C data link between the uh, Open EVSC module and the LCD. You've got the Open EVSC module itself, which contains a micro-switching power supply, um, the Amtel microcontroller, which is basically like an Arduino, kind of. You've got the main fuse block right here with a fuse on both the hots. You've got the, uh, the relay right here, which connects and disconnects power to the car. Uh, let's see, these two black wires here feed back to the open EVSC controller. That's the power to close the relay. You've got a couple wires right here on the downstream side of the relay that connect back to the open EVSC module to let the uh, open EVSC controller know uh, when the relay has closed. You've got a CT coil right here wrapped around both of the conductors headed out to the car. Uh, this is what provides you with your ground fault detection. This CT coil right here, um, is connected to this simple bridge rectifier circuit that uh, also has a, uh, a current divider hooked up to it that's actually mounted to the panel uh, so that I can uh, tune the analog display. I just do that by throwing a, a clamp meter on here and you know just adjusting the potentiometer. This micro switching power supply right here feeds power to the LEDs that I've mounted to the, uh, the panel. Additionally, I had also planned for it to power uh, an Arduino trinket that would have handled the, the uh, current detection out to the car and, and controlling the analog gauge and stuff. But my wife kind of was like, what are you doing? That's a waste of a microcontroller. Just use four, four diodes and a potentiometer. This is what happens when your wife is an electrical engineer. At some point, I may put the trinket in here. I mean, there's plenty of room for it. And that's how I would end up integrating the rotary dial into something. I'm not exactly sure what. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much the inside there. It's very simple. It's also much messier than it should be. One of these days I'll go in there and clean it up. Here's what the EVSC looked like when I was testing it in my workroom with the room lights turned off. You can see the LEDs that I added where the incandescence used to be 
and you can clearly see the illumination on the analog gauge. One other neat feature of this setup is that the color of the LCD backlight will actually change depending on the state that the EVSE is in. So a uh, disconnected state backlight is a different color from charging, which is a different color from an error, which is a different color from connected but not charging. Now, before anyone asks me where I got that piece of test equipment, uh, let, me, let me just make it really clear. I spent like a month regularly checking eBay to find exactly the piece of test equipment I wanted with just the right analog gauge and the right switches and, and the right dimensions to hold everything that I wanted and the layout that I wanted and, and all that. So this was like a one-time eBay find. There's a bunch of other old test equipment on eBay, including like old naval radios and all kinds of crazy stuff. So, you know, if you're looking for an enclosure for your neat project, seriously, just, just check eBay. There's tons of stuff up there. It just might take some time to find exactly the right piece. I actually did post a couple work log videos for the project on my YouTube channel a while back, but I ended up pulling them down because I, well, never finished the work log because I preferred to work on the project rather than shoot video of me working on the project. But I'll leave my past self to explain a little bit about how some of the stuff is mounted inside. And I'll show you why. I got the, uh, I separated the, the back half from the top half here. Uh, I'm going to kind of leave it that way. Uh, all the components will be mounted to this. This I'll secure to its case there. Um, so that way I can just pull the front off like, a, like removing a, a panel rather than trying to pull the, all the guts out, which would be really inconvenient. But yeah, you can see this, this thing is, is just really cool. All right, so first up, uh, you can see I've got all the holes drilled in the, uh, the base plate there for all the main uh, open EVSC parts. And I uh, also got all of those tapped. So I've, I've started test fitting components. Some little standoffs uh, in there that, uh, that the EV open EVSC board are going to be sitting on and everything else for the most part, the relay and the fuse holders and stuff are all just going to screw right down to it. If any of you are interested in doing your own open EVSC project, then hop on over to openevsc.com. All of the information is there as well as a store to buy either the individual components, the control module, or complete kits. They actually have uh, complete 40 amp EVSC kits starting at about $250 and they have more advanced kits with more features and stuff that cost a bit more. And if you want to get really fancy when building your own, instead of using one of the kits, um, the Open EVSC module is actually very scalable. So depending on the other parts that you select, you know, you can pick up some high current contactors and throw it into your build and uh, have an EVSC that will deliver 80 amps. So, you know, in that case, matching the capabilities of Tesla's high power wall connector. So yeah, if you want to start your own really creative EVSC project, or if you just want an inexpensive EVSC that you don't mind having to put together yourself, definitely check out Open EVSC. Anyway, that's all for this weekend. Remember, if you guys have any questions, comments, or video ideas, leave them in the comments below. And uh, yeah, don't forget to tune in next week for the Model X video. See you guys later.